Okay, here is the final video for the day. Uh, final paper suggest suggestion for this week at least. And you don't have to take any of my suggestions, by the way. Uh, but if you want to, those are things I know quite a bit about and I'm happy to help with. Uh, we've talked a lot about JEP and D, those documentary sources, and um, you've tried, uh, most of you have tried in, in very good faith to apply those. And uh, Again, I don't, as I said earlier, I don't want you to get overly concerned about that stuff at this level. It's just not that important. What is important is to, is to notice that there are differences and to be able to talk about them. Uh, so you can say this source is different from that source. Um, and if you can say this is J and that's E, it's a shorthand to talk about it. Uh, so in terms of this approach to the textual um, texture of the thing here, uh, in 796, well, let me back up, sorry. Uh, we know, that we've talked about the fact that this whole thing is the whole first five books, the Pentateuch, the Torah, the five scrolls, uh, the books of Moses, whatever you want to call them, they're an early history of the Israelite people. Um, and we've talked about the different sources that are woven in by the redactors and tried, you know, within our abilities to, uh, to um, understand those different sources. And again, I'll take you back to that very first exercise with the little section from Bradbury's Fahrenheit 451. That's how it gets done. You know, that's how things get filled in and differences in tone, like we talked about uh, in my video earlier, the one about the car accident and the one about different expressions of voices and so forth. That's how that work gets done. And you don't have to be an expert at this level. Certainly, you don't have to be an expert in this. But what you do need to do is to develop, to develop the sensitivity to notice the evidence and then the courage and that's what it boils down to to talk about the evidence and to draw conclusions from it and set hypotheses and see if your hypothesis works uh, it really is detective work uh, as uh, Friedman suggests in the video that I gave you that you don't have to watch uh, Friedman suggests it's, it's detective work so um, this long history of the uh, Israelite people and we're not going to try to um, put dates to it. If you're interested in dates like that, um, most, well, some scholars say that the patriarch Abraham, uh, whom you haven't read about yet, uh, yeah, you have, uh, the patriarch Abraham probably lived uh, from external evidence about 1800 years BCE. So that's 1800 years before the year zero or what is this, 2015? You know, three thirty-five hundred 3,500 years ago, three, or 4,000 years ago. Possibly, again, dating this stuff is really difficult and uh, virtually impossible in some cases, and it doesn't really matter. But we do have some dates that are solidly set, and so the culture's been developing for some time, uh, and they've now uh, established a dominance over that whole area, the area of what is now called the Nation of Israel, roughly, more or less. Uh, and so in 790, I have to check my note, 796, uh, which is later than the period we're studying right now, but, but I'm telling you this because there's a reason I want to make a, a point. In 796, uh, the nation splits into a northern kingdom and a southern kingdom. And it was, it's a political split, um, possibly caused by the fact that the, the religious professionals couldn't get along. This happens all the time uh, in religious, uh, religious factions. Uh, anyway, whatever the reason was, it splits into the southern kingdom and the northern kingdom. And the southern kingdom is where Jerusalem is, the cultic center is. Uh, and it's also the region called Judah, J-U-D-A-H. The Northern Kingdom doesn't have the cultic center, uh, and it's Ephraim, E-P-H-R-A-I-M, starting with an E. And as Gable says, it's just happy coincidence that the J source seems to be in the south, and the E source has, happens to be in the north, because J and E have nothing to do with Judah and Ephraim. It's um, Yahweh and um, Elohim, so just a happy coincidence. But anyway... Uh, as the northern kingdom has to redefine itself once it has, once it has severed itself from 
uh, the southern kingdom, and it doesn't last long, by the way, it goes away really quickly. Uh, they may begin, they may, and I'm in, in stressing may, begin to develop their own traditions and their own stories. So all of that is by, by reference to going back to the um, Pentateuch, the original um, Torah material. You will notice there are lots of stories, or at least some stories, where uh, someone other than the, the firstborn son um, gains precedence. There are lots of them. Jacob and Esau is one. Um, Isaac and Ishmael is another one. There are several in there. Um, normally in this culture, everything, everything devolved upon the firstborn son. That's why having a son was so important. And having a son early on was important because the entire inheritance went to the firstborn son in this culture. And so you have an interesting countercultural theme in some of these stories where the second born son or someone further down, someone who's not the first born son, comes out on top. Uh, Jacob and Esau is one particularly, uh, Ishmael and Isaac another one, uh, there are two or three others in there. So some scholars at least suggest that the the ones, the stories where someone other than the firstborn comes out on top may be a strong indicator that they're from the E source because E, the northern kingdom, may have been feeling like a bastard son or might have been feeling like they'd been kicked out of their inheritance. And, uh, and so to reestablish their kind of dominance and prominence, they may have composed these stories uh, so that it serves as a metaphor when the second born son comes out on top and wins everything you know that could be the northern kingdom the east source saying look you know the the, the little guy gets gets to win after all you know um that's a pretty good theory and it's it would be it's interesting to pursue it and examine the differences between those sources and the sources where the first born son uh, wins out, which is culturally expected. So the second born son or the later born son uh, is unexpected, it's countercultural. So that's another interesting uh, topic to possibly pursue for some of you who are interested in maybe distinguishing between J and E. It's really hard to distinguish between J and E, and again, not terribly necessary. But if you notice this ongoing theme where the second born son comes out on top, and then you think, which is fairly logical. You think, well, maybe that's how Ephraim, the northern kingdom, maybe that's how they were feeling, like a little bit like outcasts, you know, a little bit like people who didn't fit. And so they shaped their stories to make the second come out on top of the downtrodden uh, or the little guy win instead of the big guy. Uh, it's an interesting approach. There's plenty of material out there, and that's a nice narrow approach that would make for, I think, a very satisfying experience for uh, someone who wanted to pursue that. And again, I'm happy to help with that. Um, okay, I think that's it. I don't think I want to give you anything else. There goes the clock again. I think that's enough for this week. I'm going to put these, these three little videos up for you, and that will consist of the lectures for this week. The discussion boards will be coming up very shortly. Uh, but I urge you to try to pick a topic as soon as you can, and if you have any doubt uh, about it, uh, you know, run it by me. Let me advise you. I can help a lot. Um, but you know what the basic parameters are, uh, and so there shouldn't be any, any issues there. All right. I hope you all have a great week, and I'll be chatting with you in the, in the discussion boards. Bye.